Hello, everyone. Welcome once again, perhaps, or for, perhaps for the first time, to Messiah Lutheran Church here in Chiocton for this now, the third Sunday after Easter, which is often celebrated as Good Shepherd Sunday. And for that reason, we're going to get to hear a reading dealing with Jesus as our shepherd. We'll take a look at John chapter 10, uh, the Good Shepherd chapter uh, in our sermon. We'll get to speak back and forth Psalm 23. Uh, and of course, we'll get to confess our sins to our Savior and be encouraged that he really does give us life, and life to the full through forgiveness. Uh, let's begin. Uh, everything's printed for us in our service folder for those of us who are here, and the words should be available for you to follow along online. Um, so let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, to those in error, you show the light of your truth, intending to return them to the way of righteousness. We pray you make it happen that they all are brought into the fellowship of Christ's religion so that they may avoid those things which are contrary to the true faith and so that they follow all things that are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. We join in uh, speaking responsively, Psalm 23. You can find it in our hymnals on page 72. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Shepherd of the Church, in the waters of baptism, you have given us new life, and at your table you nourish us with the food of salvation. Lead us along safe paths through the darkness of this world. Dispel the terrors of death, and bring us at last to your house, where you dwell with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear from the first letter of 
the Apostle Peter, chapter 2, beginning at verse 19. Peter knows that we can bear the pain of unjust suffering at the hands of the world, the devil, and our sinful flesh. Uh, he has the example of Jesus, the shepherd and overseer of our souls, uh, to inspire us. For Jesus gladly endured all to rescue us, uh, us sheep who had gone astray. So, from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 19. For it is commendable, if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit, if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Here ends the lesson. We respond, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord provided redemption for his people. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen now to the gospel lesson set aside for this weekend from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is God's word. We bow our heads in prayer. Most gracious Lord Jesus, you prepare a table before us in the face of our enemies we thank you for the table of your word that you have laid out so that Satan may not be able to accuse us or drag us to hell, for this food is eternal life in your name. Bless us this day with it. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends in Christ, my family just recently, in the midst of this pandemic, watched The Willoughbys on uh, Netflix. The Willoughbys is a cartoon, an animated movie about uh, four children whose parents, well, let's say they could be better. When we have parents who seem to care only about themselves and who think that we as children are a waste of their time and an inconvenience, it's a terrible and horrible thing. 
it shatters us. It made Martin Luther, for instance, because his own father was very harsh, have a hard time praying, Our Father who art in heaven, because every time he said Our Father, he couldn't help but think about God. If parents have that kind of effect on us, and, and, and they are, are there to mostly take care of our, our bodies as they guide us on the way with our souls, well then how, how much terrible at least the same would it be to have pastors and people who are in charge of the church who are supposed to especially look out for our souls, how terrible it would be to have the fear that they didn't care about us at all. Jesus knew this was a real situation, and he wanted the people in front of him to know that Jesus gives sheep shepherds they need. He knew this was a situation because just in the chapter before this one, a terrible thing had happened to a man born blind whom Jesus had healed. His friends and neighbors, when they saw that he had been healed miraculously like this, instead of rejoicing over what God had made happen in this man's life, they went, wait a minute, we better take him to the Jewish leadership because some Something's going to go bad if we don't. Because this had happened on the Sabbath day, their fear was that somebody had, was going to get in terrible trouble and they weren't going to let it be them. So they hauled this poor man, who, who had every reason to rejoice, in front of the Jewish leadership. And the Jewish leadership, when this guy said, Jesus did it, and I think Jesus has got to be a representative from God because God wouldn't let this kind of thing happen uh, with a man that he didn't approve of. Well, when he said that, they said, you have been sinful from birth, steeped in sin from birth. How dare you lecture us? And they cast him out of the synagogue and said he would not be allowed to go to church ever again. Jesus found the man and encouraged him and led him to see that Jesus was his Savior. Jesus wanted to do the same thing for these people, knowing that that having spiritual leaders who actually care about you is extremely important. He wanted them to know that he was a shepherd who cares for the sheep. So he made the point, that he was the shepherd whom the gatekeeper opened the gate up for. And that gatekeeper was no one else but God the Father, who had Jesus, uh, had his divinity brought into humanity by the Holy Spirit, (coughs) excuse me, and then had him welcomed into the paddock of the world where all these sheep were. Jesus said on one occasion that his father had sent him to the lost sheep of Israel. And it wasn't just the lost sheep of Israel. He later on said that there are other sheep whom I have been sent for, whom I also must bring, and I will bring them into into this fold, and there'll be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus had the okay of God the Father who opened up the paddock so that he could go in. And Jesus showed himself to be the kind of shepherd that the sheep recognized as a friend, not somebody who had come to hurt and harm them and take advantage of them. They did not run away from him. These people, when he first preached in Capernaum, recognized that he did not preach like the the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. He spoke as one who had authority, and he had power over demons, and he had come to rescue people and to love them and forgive them. When these men brought their buddy who had been paralyzed in some way, uh, the first thing Jesus said was, son, be of 
good cheer. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus wanted people to know that he could heal him because God the Father had nothing against him because Jesus had come to take his sins away so that there would be nothing to stop God the Father from taking care of this man's physical problems. People rejoiced and said, he has done everything well. They knew he was the good shepherd. And when he said that the gatekeeper opened up the paddock for him, he was reminding all those people that they could look at God's word and see what God the Father had said about what their shepherd really was. They could stop and think about how in the book of Ezekiel, God had said uh, that he was angry at the false prophets who were not looking out for his sheep, but that he was going to raise the son of David who would be a shepherd for his sheep. And that brought them back to what King David had said in that psalm, Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want a thing because he makes sure I, I go in paths of righteousness because he provides me with that righteousness. He, he restores my soul by taking my sins away and by raising me from the dead someday without sin. He does everything so that I can say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Jesus wanted those people to know that they had a shepherd who was a loving, kind, and gracious shepherd who had God the Father's backing on all of this stuff. And he was the kind of shepherd who, when he brought the sheep out of the sheep pen, he went ahead of them. And he faced whatever there was to face first even if it meant that it was going to kill him. Because he, he wasn't going to stand behind the sheep and let them take it in the chin from whatever horrible things there were ahead. He had come to save them. He knows that you and I might be afraid. What if God wanted us to have a shepherd who was only about, you better behave, and about what we were, and who would say, you do not deserve to be in my sheep pen. We live in fear that our sins have exempted us from having a nice shepherd who would care for us. So Jesus comes to you and me and he says, no, 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 no. I'm the one the gatekeeper wanted to come to you. I'm the one who really cares more about you than I do about myself, so that we are glad to hear and follow him. Jesus gives sheep the shepherd they need, a shepherd who really gives them life, a shepherd who cares for the flock. But Jesus knows, and any one of these people, all they had to do was look at the world they lived in Jesus knows that there are other shepherds who fill us with fear. Jesus is not walking the earth visibly anymore uh, that we can tell. He is everywhere at once because as God, he says, I will be with you always to the end of the age. But there are times when we'd like a human being to talk to us and remind us of things. And Jesus knew that. But he also knew from, for instance, the book of Jeremiah, that there were all kinds of false prophets who led the people to believe lies, things that were not true. He knew from looking at these Pharisees and, and these Sadducees that there were people who were more in it for themselves than they were for the sheep. He was in Jerusalem. He'd been in Jerusalem before and seen the way that they had set up exchange tables in the temple, uh, selling sheep and goats for sacrifices and saying perhaps, oh, if you want to make God happy, you'd better buy this really good sheep at a premium price because, you know, you need that. 
and leading people not only to think that only wealthy people could have access to God, but making people think that their salvation was dependent not on God's grace and kindness and mercy, but on something that they had to do. Jesus had cast out all of those money changers, knocking over their temples, driving their animals out of there, because he was furious that they had stolen away from people the opportunity to know that God loved them and forgave them. He said, you have turned my house, which was supposed to be a house of prayer, into a den of thieves. They were stealing from people, not just their money. They were stealing from people, and he hoped they had a forgiveness. They led even Jesus' disciples to think that it was wealth that made a difference when Jesus told that rich young ruler to give up everything and he went away sad and Jesus said, it's hard for the rich to get into heaven. His disciples said, wow, if this is the way it is for for the wealthy, then who can get eternal life? These men had confused all kinds of people about what the truth was. And it was all for themselves. They didn't care about what the truth might be. Read just two chapters ahead of this. They sent the temple guard to arrest Jesus. And when the temple guard came back without him and said, gee, nobody ever talked like this guy. They said, do you believe in him true? Check the scriptures and see. No good thing comes out of, out of Nazareth. He's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Well, there were tax rolls that could have told him that Mary and Joseph had been to Bethlehem. Good grief, the only reason they were there was for the tax rolls of the census. They could have checked to see if Jesus had been born in Bethlehem, but they weren't interested. And when he would heal in one chapter from this, Uh, his friend Lazarus by bringing him back from the dead, their only response was, we've got to stop this guy. If this kind of thing keeps up, everyone will believe in him. And then they said, and then the Romans will come away and take away our position. Jesus knows how terrible that is for people. The people who had met this man born blind took him to the Pharisees because they themselves were confused about what the truth was. And Jesus doesn't want that to happen to you and me. He knows that that kind of thing hasn't stopped happening. When the Christian church stopped being the kind of thing that the Roman Empire persecuted, and suddenly was the church of the emperor and became a highly respected thing, all of a sudden these Roman administrators who were so good at organizing and running things thought, we've got to get a hold of that. And they got themselves into positions of power and authority, and then they decided they couldn't tell people about Jesus' forgiveness because They couldn't control people that way. They couldn't get all the money out of people that way. They couldn't keep their positions of power and influence and make themselves look like they were the ones who made everything happen and kept the church safe. So they started saying, well, Jesus only paid for the sins up to the point of your baptism. And you've got to pay for the rest. And if you don't, you're going to have to go to this horrible place until you have. But if you give us your money, we'll get you out. God had to raise up somebody like Martin Luther to save us from people like that. And God has to keep saving us from people like that. But he does. When these people were mystified at what Jesus was trying to say. He knew he had to say something more. So although he, he was the shepherd, he needed to say, I'm going to make sure that you have under shepherds who will take care of you. And for that reason, he said, I'm not just the shepherd. I have made myself the 
gate to. And as the gate, which the gatekeeper opened to let him become the great shepherd, Jesus says, I'm the one who makes sure you have shepherds. Because he says, the person who, um, who goes in through the gate uh, will be saved. He has made sure that there are shepherds who go in through the gate, and as a result, they're saved. He is saying that these guys have seen that they needed Jesus to be their Savior, and they appreciate it so much. And now, having been saved themselves, he opens up. Uh, they, They pass through him by learning about him, and he gives them access to the sheep. So that when the sheep hear them talking, they're talking about what Jesus is. They're talking about how Jesus is their loving, kind shepherd who goes ahead of them and has saved them. And he says they go in and they get their sheep and they come out and they find pasture. These guys find pasture for the sheep. So that the sheep get the nutrition they need They feed off the table of abundance and drink from the overflowing cup of Christ's forgiveness. These sheep uh, wind up being able to say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because Jesus isn't satisfied with just being the shepherd. He wants to make sure there are under shepherds who know what pasturage is. And he has always done that. Even in the dark days when there were people who tried to say that they were in charge and that they controlled what heaven was all about, Jesus made sure there were still people who said the truth about salvation. He made it possible that they could still hear God's word read on Sunday mornings and get communion and be reminded of Jesus giving his body and blood for them that there would be a Martin Luther and there would be other guys who would come forward, that there would be what so many of us have learned about our Sunday school teachers and our publishing house and our synod and uh, the pastors we had as kids that Jesus used to make sure that we got the pasturage we needed. If you watch the Willoughby's, you'll see kids who don't know what to do. They love their parents, but they feel like their parents don't love them. And they are anxious, anxious to straighten their parents out and help their parents to see the truth. And They would do anything. But thanks be to God that our Savior knows how desperately we want the shepherds we need so that we have life and have it to the full, so that we have life that overflows with abundance and that never stops because we have the promise of eternal life now because we're forgiven and the promise that Jesus will raise us from the dead because he's not mad at us, that Jesus is the shepherd who cares for the flock and the shepherd who trains under shepherds who know what pasturage is. Jesus gives sheep shepherds they need. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, good shepherd, we have heard the sweet sound of your familiar loving voice in the gospel and have feasted in the green pastures of your holy word. Bless your word in our lives. Use its message to nourish and sustain us as we journey through this life to the next. What joy it is to know that you laid down your life for the sheep, even sheep like us. Gracious shepherd, we are truly confused and foolish without you. Forgive us for the times we wander from you and stray from the call of your voice. Restore us to your fold and protect us from the evil one. 
When Satan comes in the sheep's clothing of false teaching, expose his lies and guide us in your truth. When temporary pleasures beckon us to follow the wide road to hell, use your rock and staff to curb our sinful nature and lead us in paths of righteousness. Guiding shepherd, bless your church with faithful under-shepherds, pastors who proclaim your death and resurrection as they minister to the souls in their care. Give all ministers of the gospel an unwavering devotion to your word. Tender shepherd, look with special care on all who suffer from loneliness, disease, accident, or loss. Lift them into your comforting arms and embrace them with the warmth of your love. Carry them through life's troubling times. Renew hope and joy in their lives. We think especially uh, of what we are going through even now in our country and in countries all over the world. We think of the terror that many people must have of the pestilence that flies by day and by night. Be with them, remind them that you are a loving and gracious God, cause them to turn to Jesus for all their hope, and lift them out of these difficult days uh, to light and life in Jesus. Loving shepherd, we pray also for your other sheep. Let your voice be heard in all the world. Prosper the work of our missionaries at home and abroad. Give us all the zeal and courage to share with our friends and neighbors the good news of sins forgiven. Use our witness to gather the elect into one fold under your care. Eternal Shepherd, when our days on earth come to an end and we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, lead us safely to our eternal home. There we will enjoy your goodness and mercy forever. Amen. And we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. That concludes our worship service for this, the third weekend after Easter, uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. God bless you all and grant you a safe and good week to come.